Back and knee pain relief. Today I'm doing a comment on a video by Evan Carmichael. And he solved his back and knee pain by doing five things that I'm going to list and talk about. So I want to explain the mechanisms of what is it that happening in the body that created those changes for him. So make sure that you stay tuned to the end because if you understand the big picture, then you can see if this is something that you could benefit from. And if you understand the big picture, you can get a complete solution instead of just a partial fix. So Evan said that he had, uh, years and years ago, he had a lot of back pain and knee pain. And he would go to a chiropractor and it wouldn't really help. But then he took things into his own hands, which was very proactive, and he found some solutions that worked for him. But why did they work? So here's what he did. He said the main thing was to use a stand-up desk. Hack number one is use a stand-up desk. So instead of sitting down, he created a stand-up environment where he could work standing, and then his back pain went away. So what happens here is it's all about posture. And if you stand or sit, there's two completely different movement mechanisms involved. And humans are designed to do all sorts of different activity, to be functioning in all kinds of different postures and positions, but not for 8 or 12 or 14 or 16 hours a day. So we can sit for a little bit, we can stand for a little bit, but when we sit for very, very long times, we change the signals in the body. So everything in the body is controlled by the brain. The brain regulates the body. It regulates muscle tension, it regulates pH, it regulates blood flow, it regulates muscle tone that controls the joint and the stability that prevents injuries. But in order for the brain to do that, the brain needs information from the body. This, this information, these signals are called proprioception. So proprioception paints a picture for the brain so that the brain knows what the world looks like and if it gets enough of these signals then it has a true picture, a sufficient and correct picture of the world and it can make correct decisions and it can balance and regulate your body. But if we sit for 8, 12, 14 hours a day then we are, we're skewing, we're changing those signals. We're generating less signals and we're creating very one-sided signals because we're setting up tension in the body in specific places and we're maintaining that tension for hours and hours and hours. So not only are we reducing the total amount of signals, we're also depriving the brain of the correct signals and we're creating too many of signals that are one-sided, we skew that pattern. By using a stand-up desk and improving the posture, you improve the signals. You're, you're allowing a different mo motion, so that when you stand up and you had your head straight over your shoulders, now there is a, a subtle motion in the spine that's generating signals that's benefiting the brain and creating this picture we're talking about. As soon as you sit down, you're losing that lumbar curve, so you're, you're rounding out your back, and as soon as you round out your back, your, your head juts forward, and now you're creating tension and you're reducing motion in the back and the entire spine. Hack number two is go barefoot. This is the thing that saved my knees. The second thing that he did was he said to go barefoot. And he said that this is a more natural way. And I totally agree. So shoes need to be stable. So I'm not opposed to shoes, even though as soon as I come home, I take my shoes off. I always walk barefoot wherever I'm going, uh, except when I'm at work. I wear shoes, but I wear very firm shoes. I wear shoes that are properly built up so that my, my foot can act as if it's if it's on solid ground. I don't believe in these mushy, uh, soft shoes that feel good for five minutes and then they don't give you any kind of support. Uh, that's not what we're looking for. 
So again, by walking barefoot, you're increasing the motion of the foot, you're increasing the natural stressors on the foot, and you're increasing the signals to the brain. So now the brain has a better picture of what that foot is doing, and you're maintaining these signal pathways better. Hack number three, have your arms just over 90 degrees at your desk. He said to keep your arms just over 90 degrees. So what that means is, when he's standing at his desk, the surface of the top surface, it, it should be just below the elbow so that the hand is pointing down just a little bit. And again, this is a relaxed position because if it's any higher, you're going to shrug your shoulders, you're going to create tension, you're going to create more of this one-sided pattern information that skews and distorts and creates tension. So it's another thing that has to do with improved posture and improved signals. Hack number four, make your monitor height higher. Then he said the next thing he did was to position the monitor higher. And this is critical because there's so many things that we do in our lives where we look down. So we have kids walking around with their cell phones, we have people on their tablets, we have people on, on laptops, and we live a whole life with this enormous tension in the neck. And when we have our computer, it's a little bit better because it's kind of up in front, but it's not good enough because you want to be where you can relax in a normal position, like you're looking out over the horizon, and that's where your monitor should be. So you want to raise the monitor up, you want to keep the, the keyboard down where your arms are comfortable. You want to raise the monitor up so that it is where you would be looking out. Use a rebounder. So the next thing that he had was a rebounder. This is like a mini trampoline and this is a fantastic tool as long as you're fit enough to use it. And what it does is when you're jumping on it, first of all you're performing a little bit of exercise, physical activity, but more than that it compresses and releases and compresses and releases. So when it's in the down position, you're increasing the gravitational pull on your body. And when you're up, then you're releasing the gravitational pull on your body. So it's like you're going, you're changing the g-forces back and forth, back and forth, which is a tremendous stimulation for your brain because 90% of what your brain does is to monitor your physical movement and your position in a field of gravity. So when you start bouncing, that's like fireworks for the brain. He would sometimes stand on it when he was working and just kind of move around. And I don't really have an opinion on that, but the way I would use it would be to keep it next, keep it close to where you're working, if you can, and then just get on it for 30 seconds every 30 minutes or every hour and get that boost, get that juice, get that fireworks going. And then you get on with your day and you've had like a boost of energy from that. So everything that he was talking about has to do with, with posture, stimulation, and with increasing signals to the brain. That's why these things work, because they increase signals to the brain. But let's take it one more step and talk about this because if you want to sum this up, it's really about natural versus unnatural. Humans have evolved, we are, our DNA, our physiology, our brain has evolved and developed and it's dependent on certain factors. It's dependent on these signals. It can't do without them. It can do all right for a short time, but it can't thrive without these things. So the natural way for the body is to move. The natural way for the body is to have a varied lifestyle, a varied position, so that you sit for a little bit, you stand for a little bit, you change things up. I don't think sitting is evil, but we got to think back. What did our ancestors do? They they were out on the hunt, they were walking long distances, they were working, uh, planting, growing, digging, uh, they were working on things, then they sat down for a rock, on a rock, they sat down on their heels, 
but they never sat in an office chair for 14 hours. So the body is made to do all these different things, but it's not made to do any one thing for a very, very long time. It, it needs change. The unnatural part is the lifestyle that we have created where we have static movements. So if you're sitting and your head is jutting forward, that's a static movement. If you're driving in the car for six hours, that's a static movement. You're contracting your hip flexors in an unnatural short position. You're creating tension for, for a very long time. And some other professions that we see a lot is, for example, hairdressers, musicians, and graphic designers. Because now we have other professions where if they work uh, with a with a person's hair, then their arm is, is up constantly. So now, even though they're standing, they have a muscle contraction for most of the day. A musician might be a guitar player or a violinist or something. And they now they use one specific posture for hours and hours. Same thing graphic designers. A lot of them work with the computers, but a lot of them also work with, with tablets. And again, you're, you're putting your body in a specific position. So when you do that, you're creating a one-sided pattern. You're creating a repetitive, unchanging signal that becomes a habit that kind of gets locked in. And that's where those tight muscles come from. So if we have a situation where we have to sit a lot, where we have to hold our arm in a specific position, now we need to do something on a regular basis to undo that pattern. To either do the opposite, to stretch it out, or to create variety. Just change it around so that that pattern doesn't get static and stuck. The only issue that I had with his video, I think he's a super class act guy. I don't have anything negative to say about it, except the title itself because there was like a little parenthesis at the end and it says relief without exercise. And I have some issues with that because it's part of our, of our collective awareness, of our collective belief system that relief without exercise is a good thing. That if you can get away with it, then you're lucky and you should try to do that. But first of all, relief is not what we're looking for. That's where so many people are getting trouble because they have a pain and they just do enough to get relief and then they think they're done. But we have to understand that there's an optimal function in the body. This is what's gonna allow us to live into our 80s and 90s without degenerating, without having loss of function, to be able to do the things we enjoy up into very high years. So if we have 100% function and it starts declining, then we get to a point, we get to a threshold, a breaking point where the body can't compensate. And now we have symptoms and if we don't deal with that, then the, the decline continues and we get disease and eventually death. So if we just do enough to get rid of the symptom, then we could still be kind of hovering at about half of our optimal function. And when people really start understanding that, that it's the ability of the brain to regulate, it's the ability of every cell in the body to clean up and produce energy and for muscles to contract, that there's an optimal level and then there's a level below which we start having symptoms. You don't want to just get rid of the symptom you want to get to optimal function. And I, think, I don't think there's anyone that disagrees with that once they truly understand the difference between optimal versus just symptom relief. So again, I have a little issue because relief is not what we're looking for. And the other thing is without exercise. So what is exercise? When you go through and you make these changes, then you're getting exercise you're getting motion, you're getting more activity in the body, you're getting these little movements, little changes all the time. So standing and walking a little bit 
is movement. It creates signals. Uh, reaching up on a shelf and put, picking down a jar, that's movement. It's a form of exercise. So it's not about going to the gym or joining a boot camp and, and sweating and being in pain for hours. That's not necessary, but the body is designed for movement. Movement generates signals. So if someone can lose weight without exercise, we should pity them. If someone can create pain relief or if they can lower their insulin resistance or they can create a positive physiological change without exercise, then we should really pity them if they think that that means they don't have to exercise. Because, and again, exercise isn't blood, sweat and tears. It's about movement on a regular basis, using the body that was designed to be used. So we have to remember that health is a triangle, that everything is about signals and there is signals that are influenced by structural mechanisms, chemical mechanisms and emotional mechanisms. So you could be stressed and your blood pressure goes up. Your physiology, your signals change because you're thinking differently. You could eat something you're allergic to, your blood pressure goes up. You could sit still or you could exercise and your blood pressure changes. So physiology is influenced by all of these. So when we're talking about natural versus unnatural, then movement is natural. Sitting still, static things are unnatural. And feeling good is natural, the emotional aspect. Feeling good is natural. Feeling bad is unnatural. It interferes with your health, with your physiology, with your balance. And the most important one may be the nutritional part because that's the thing that has changed more in the last 50 years than it has in the previous 50,000. So there's very, very little in common that we have the food that we eat compared to what we people had uh, a few thousand years ago. It's natural to do certain things and that the body thrives on what it's designed for. So when he said that he had gone to a, a chiropractor and it wasn't helping, that's because they weren't addressing the cause. The cause was repetitive postural stress. So if you adjust and you relieve that stress, but then you go back to imposing the stress with your lifestyle, then you haven't solved the problem. So he was absolutely right in being proactive and figuring out how to change this. And it wasn't that the chiropractic wasn't working, but he was just doing this to himself over and over again. So we have to understand that there's a natural way of doing things. There's a natural structure, chemical and emotional state for the body. So he called these things life hacks. And I'm all for creating ways of making life easier and quicker and more efficient. We just have to understand there is no hack for biology. So we, we are biology. It's designed to be a certain way, to respond a certain way. And we can't change that because your DNA hasn't changed for a quarter million years. So we can get smarter about it. We can learn quick ways to get some exercise. We can, we can incorporate these things into our lives, but we can't bypass them because it's unnatural. It goes against biology and it's not going to work. So kudos to Evan for putting out a good video with some very, very helpful tips. And I hope that you enjoyed understanding a little bit about the explanations of why these things, what they have in common and how it works and how you can use those to further your own quality of life. So please share this video with as many people as you can because health and life is what we're all about. Everyone wants to be happy and healthy. If you're new to this channel, make sure that you subscribe and hit that notification bell so that we can keep this content coming your way. Thank you so much for watching.